My friends on the Republican side like to paint me as the big spender. We're on track to cut the federal deficit this year by $1.7 trillion. My plan to fight inflation will lower your cost and lower the deficit. I reduced the federal deficit. All the talk about the deficit from my Republican friends, I love it. My budget reduced the, the deficit by $350 billion. Well, there you have it. Um, we'll just call that the Pinocchio video. We've heard about the hostage video. That there was the Pinocchio video. Let's ask Missouri Congressman Jason Smith. He's the ranking member of the Budget Committee, soon to be the budget chair when the cavalry comes home. So, Jason, you heard President Biden. You know he never fibs. He says he's a big deficit cutter and spending cutter. What say you? Yeah, he's definitely not in a reality world today. Um, what we say back in Missouri, that's a bunch of hogwash, Larry. Uh, <laughs> last year, Larry, last year, President Biden had added $2.78 trillion to the deficit in his first year in office. That is the second highest deficit in the history of America. And in fact, Larry, that was $517 billion more than what the Congressional Budget Office even projected for 2021. And that was prior to passage of the, the $2 trillion Biden bailout bill, as I refer to it, which has definitely caused a 40-year record in inflation. So um, what would have happened if there was, if there was no $2 trillion, you know, so-called rescue plan, which triggered the inflation uh, blow-off? Uh, would we have gone back to the CBO base? In other words, I'm trying to figure out um, how dumb was that in deficit and spending terms and inflationary terms? Or put another way, if the GOP had beaten it back, would the deficit be even lower than it is today? Well, put it this way, if they would have not passed the American Rescue Plan, it wouldn't have pushed government spending to a whopping 30, 30 and a half percent of mm. GDP. And that is roughly 10 percentage points, Larry, higher than the historic average. And that is what sparked a 40 year inflation. That is why every American who's watching the show is paying more to put food on their table, clothes on their backs. It's because of that reckless government spending. Just in the House of Representatives last year, Larry, just in the House of Representatives, they passed more than seven and a half trillion dollars of new spending on top of just funding government. Seven and a half trillion. And for the, the average American to figure out how much seven and a half trillion dollars is, imagine, Larry, spending $10 million every day since Jesus Christ was born. You couldn't even spend seven and a half trillion dollars. That is why we have record inflation. Well, I reckon you're right. I mean, the root cause of deficits is we spend too much. The revenues are pouring in. I mean, the revenues are pouring in. Now, um, Biden, for the 10 year window, according to the CBO, the Biden budgets, the Biden legislation would keep us way above. I and mean, I think spending would be about 23 and a half percent of GDP. The 50 year, that's way above the 50 year average is something like 20 percent of GDP. So he's going to spend a lot more. And I don't know how he says he's cutting spending. The deficits come down because revenues are going up, right? Inflation revenues and the Trump tax cut revenues. You know, Larry, great point, because last year our tax revenues grew by 18 percent. That was the the highest in more than 50 years. Mm. And and the revenues for 2022 so far, they've surged over 39 percent, putting on a pace to be the largest growth since 1944 and the largest percentage of GDP ever. Why is that? That is because of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act that you helped with, that President Trump signed into law, that we worked with on the Ways and Means Committee. If we would have not done that back in 2017, we would not be having these record revenues. So thank the good Lord that we did that for our country back then. Well, um, yep, all for it. I mean, look, even with all this rigmarole, um, debt in public hands is going to go up by, I don't know, 15 or $16 trillion in this budget window. Anyway, Jason Smith, we thank you, sir.